Let's all begin to thank God in our own ways, you know, for the fact that we're here today, um, you know, just by His divine miracle. So let's begin to thank God and appreciate Him. Let's appreciate God for His love, for His kindness, for His mercy, for His grace, His compassion, and His faithfulness. Let's thank you for the fact that we are, we've arrived here safely as well. A lot of people have traveled out today and haven't you know, made it to their destination safely. Let's thank you for our health. Let's appreciate him for, for actually providing us with our daily bread. Let's appreciate him, let's appreciate him, let's thank him for his faithfulness. Let's appreciate him for his faithfulness. Ask God to forgive us of any um, sins that we have in us that can actually hinder our blessings today. Anything that can stop us from being blessed or receive blessings today. Let's ask God to forgive us and also sanctify us as well. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray that any sin is against us. It be thoughts and deeds and actions. Father, we ask God to that you forgive us greatly, Lord. Sanctify us, Lord. Or put and destroy every single sin in us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now let's, now let's come out of this place, this auditorium today, with the blood of Jesus. Let's also pray that every enemy, you know, that is here today, the man of course, any. Um, disruption. Let's ask that God arrest them in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God for everything that the enemy will come on. You know, come here and cause problems today. Lord, we pray that you arrest them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's arrest them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. And let's commit the man of God unto uh, God today. Let's ask that God uses him mightily today. And that um, every word that's been spoken through his mouth today will be word of power. So let's pray. Let's cover him as well with the blood of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. His word, let it be word of power and over through him today. In the we, we recover him with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify him greatly with the blood of Jesus. Let the Lord bless you today. Let the Lord bless you today. Let the Lord bless you that the Holy Spirit sends here today. And let the, let's pray for the power, the power of the Holy Spirit in this auditorium today. Let's begin to pray. Let's ask for the power of the Holy Spirit today. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit today. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit comes down today and manifest His power greatly today in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And let's let's ask God today that you know every unwanted character, every character that God has not placed upon us, which the enemy has placed upon us, let's ask God. You know, for, for, for removal of those characters, those destroying characters, characters that can make us miss heaven, i.e., anger, malice, you know, things of that sort. Let's ask God to uproot and to destroy such characters or such attitudes from our lives. Let's begin to pray. Father, every character that is of no yours, Lord God. In our lives, but I pray that you uproot and destroy such in mm-hmm. the us. I pray that you sanctify, sanctify us and purify us of such in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 
In Jesus' name. Let's also pray that, you know, let's ask for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us. Let's ask for Father to come and dwell in us. Let's ask for the, um, for the Lion of the Child of Judah to come and dwell in us. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. For the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. The Father to dwell in us. Jesus Christ, pray to come and dwell in us. Dwell in us, dwell in us, dwell in us greatly and richly in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's ask as well, Lord God, that you know, every stumbling block in which the enemy has put in our path to stop us from missing heaven or to stop us from fulfilling our God given assignments, let's ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit to destroy such obstacles or barriers in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Every stumbling block in which the enemy has put in our path, Lord God. Father, I pray, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for total destruction of such obstacles and such barriers in our lives, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, let's pray that every word of Jericho that, that has been built around us, around our lives, let's ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit to bring down such walls in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Every satanic word of Jericho that has been built around us, O Lord God, to stop us from fulfilling, O Lord God, to stop us from fulfilling that which you have predestined us to fulfill. Lord God, we pray for the pulling down of such walls in the name of Jesus. We pray for total destruction of such walls, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. You know, when we have when we sleep, you know, we do have dreams, you know, we do have sexual dreams. You know, we have dreams of being fed in the dreams. You know, these are forms of pollution, defiling of our altars. So therefore, let's ask God, let's let's ask for the for the blood of Jesus to flush out and cleanse our system and our spirit from such pollutions in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we will pray for the flushing out and the cleansing of any form of, 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 of spiritual pollution is that we have had through sexual dreams or through being fed through the dreams. Father God, we ask to Christ our Lord Jesus that you sanctify us and you purify us of such, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's pray for, for, for um, a cleansing of any curse you know, that our ancestors might have cost us you know, through that in which we have done in the past. Maybe through idol worshiping, you know. Um, let's ask that the blood of Jesus washes away and destroys any curse that might be placed upon our lives through that. Let's begin to pray. Father, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, Father, we pray that every curse is that might be placed upon our lives, Lord God, through that which our ancestors have done, either through worshiping idols or doing uh, forms of rituals. Father, we ask all of for a cleansing of the blood of Jesus for such curses in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's ask, you know, for uh, that any altar, any satanic altar that's been erected against us, either be um, altars of failure, altars of backwardness, altars of retrogression altars of shame or altars of disgrace. Let's ask that God, you know, destroy such altars and people behind those altars in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Pray for destruction of any altar 
that has been rented against us. Yeah, we do for our we are like, often rented against our marriages, our finances, for of shame, or any other we are not rented directly. So we pay for a total destruction of such altars in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, God, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Father, we believe in our hearts that, you know, that's which we've prayed uh, this evening that you've already answered. We pray that every single person in this going to give a testimony of every prayer made here today in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that our enemies will be alive to see awesome power and glory in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that our, your, our table will be prepared in the presence of our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, God, we commit this service all to you. For doing that, we believe that it shall be a success in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, Lord, that those who haven't gotten here, that they shall get here safely as well, Lord, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we appreciate you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the King of Glory. Rabbi the Feast of Glory. Amen. 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 The Lord is good and all the time. Amen. If you are happy, I want you to just say some, tell somebody beside you that today is the day of my perfection. Say, everything concerning me, the Lord will perfect today. Before I leave this place, God would have perfected all that concerns me. By the time I go out, people will see something supernatural in me. Because I am now an epitome of the extraordinary. And I shall be extraordinarily great. Give it to Jesus, somebody. We want to worship God for 10 minutes, children of God. We want to worship and praise God. You know what? I'm just so happy because we've got some professionals also in the house. You know, when I see professional instrumentalists, it gladdens my heart. Maybe because I love music or once in choir master, that's why. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
He says, breathe on me, breathe on me. Holy Ghost fire, breathe on me. Please shut that up. Yesterday is gone, and today I'm in me. Holy Ghost fire, breathe on me.
Isaiah chapter 63, Isaiah 63, from verses 1. The topic of the message in continuation says the victorious blood. The theme of this revival, Jesus the Eli, the 2012, is the blood has expected things. Yesterday we had the word, and today we're going to hear the word just for five or ten minutes. I'm going to pray for a few minutes as well. And indeed, the main thing is that by the efficacy of the revelation of the word of God, you are going to get an information that will bring about a transformation in your life. Yeah. And the transformation will bring you reformation. As a result of reformation, it shall be an illumination. Amen. The illumination will bring an orientation. Amen. And the orientation will take you to your divine position. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 63 from verses 1. Isaiah 6, 3, reading from verse 1. I want someone else to turn to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. I'm just going to give you places to open. And I want another person to turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. I'm going to lay emphasis on those three passages of the scripture. And I'm going to be fast about it. The book of Isaiah 63 from verse 1 says, Who is this coming from Edom? From Bozra. Edom is a place in Bozra, which is diamond stained in crimson. And I for that crimson is red. Who is robed in splendor, red or blood? Striding forward in greatness of his strength. It is I. An answer to the question is this. Someone is asking the question and someone is now responding, saying, It is I speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Who is that person that speaks in righteousness and is mighty to save? His name is Jesus. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the wine press? I have trodden the wine press alone. I have trodden the wine press alone. From the nation no one was with me. I trampled them in my hunger and trod them down in my rot. Their blood spattered my garment and I stained all my clothing. For all the day of vengeance was in my heart. And the year of my redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appealed that no one gave support. So my own hand worked salvation for me, and my whole world sustained me. I trampled the nation in anger, and my heart I made them drown and poured their blood on the ground. What this passage is saying is that the wrath of God is against all nations because of the sins of Adam and Eve and the fall of man. And two things are done in this passage. The first thing is that justification was done by the cleanse, by the pain of Jesus Christ's blood. And the other aspect of it is condemnation. He's saying there that he has not he looked for someone to help, but there was no anyone to help. So his own arm brought about the salvation, meaning that Jesus died for everyone of us. Yesterday he was crucified. Over two thousand years ago. Just like a Good Friday. They call it the Good Friday indeed because someone did something good for us. That is why it's a Good Friday to us. Lo and behold, right now he has he's taken the key from death and AIDS. He's gone to the grave to take the power of the grave. And he's gone to death to take the sting of death from death. I remember a song that says, Even dead could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is love. For dead could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is love. I want you to get the message. The fact here is that it's not saying that the day of vengeance has come. And this time around, when Christ comes the second time, he said he will trample on the blood of people, not there trampling on his own blood anymore. I told you yesterday that there is no other name through which you can be saved except the name of Jesus. That is Acts of Apostles 2, 4, verse 12. John 1, verse 12 also says, for as many that believe on him, to them he gave power to be called the sons and daughters of God. The only option left for us on this earth 
is that we accept Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior. And as many that accept sin, the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 1 that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of sin brought death, but the law of Christ has brought unto us what? Salvation. Amen. Amen. The book of um, Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 24 to 27. If you find that, you can please read. Hebrews 12 verse 24 to 27. And that person should be getting ready for Revelation 12 verse 11. That one. Whoever finds it, can, can read it. Don't be afraid to speak. Yes. Yes. Jesus the mediator. Of Jesus the mediator. Yeah. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Yes. Verse 25. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who won them on earth, how much less would how much less would we? If we turn away from him, who wants us from heaven? Verse 26. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Verse 27. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. What I was saying there in summary is that when they are the voice of the one that they can see face to face, Moses. Those that did not listen to him, the, the penalty was death. Not to talk of when they, they are hearing God from heaven speaking to them now, sending me pastors or ministers to preach the truth to you. The God is saying his word there, the Lord is saying, if they don't hear this time around, he said, it will shake not the head alone, only, will shake the heaven as well. And as many that do not accept him, he said, he will remove them. And those that trust in him shall be remain shall remain irremovable. And that's what the Bible says in Psalm 125, verse 1 to 3, that those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be removed or abided forever. As mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people from this time forth and for heaven on. Said the center of the wicked shall not rest upon the land that Lord said to the righteous. Let the righteous put their hand unto iniquity. So when you trust in God, you become unstrikable, unremovable, unshakable for the enemies. Because who dwells in you is called Christ. First John 4 verse 1 says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the third passage, Revelation 12, <coughs> verse 11 to 13. In this I'm going to give you three things that you needed to overcome every battle of your life. Once you know these three things, you are able to overcome all oppositions to your greatness in life. Revelation chapter 12 from verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of they the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Someone says the appropriate use of the blood of Jesus. Say it loud and clear. The appropriate use of the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus speaks better thing to the righteous people. When things are going tough and when the righteous says, I plead the blood of Jesus, it was for them. But when the fornicator is saying to demon that I plead the blood of Jesus against you, the demon will tell them that which blood? Is it the blood that you do not value that is making you to continue to fornicate? And the demon will tell the person that do you know what? Even that blood is not even happy with you because you are still a fornicator. So the blood is even calling that blood is even additional problem for a fornicator. But someone that has given his life to Christ when he says. I believe the blood of Jesus. The blood will say, oh yes, I'm sent for you. Get me right, the blood has saved you as sacrifice for cleansing. But you can't use it as weapon when you are a sinner. Those that can use it to fight are those that have submitted the totality of their life to Jesus. And when they call the name of Jesus, it will work for them. No wonder the Bible says, this prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. No wonder the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man had the let much. Continue, please. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah. And by the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony means the, 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 the amount of the word of God in you. What the angels use against the red dragon in that passage was that they were quoting the word. For it is written. And dragon will also go to them that for it is unto written. 
Do you remember that when he was trying to tell Jesus Christ, he told Jesus what it is written? Oh, what a big man. He was telling Jesus Christ the word himself that what it is written. And Jesus also answered him that it is also written that man shall not live by bread alone. He came again and said, For it is written. Jump from this place downstairs. <laughs> For it is written, he will send his angel to obey you, not to let you dash your feet against the stone. And Jesus also said, For it is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That is called the battle of the words. The battle of war is the battle they fought in heaven is. But the dog that stood with that word and they overcame by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is the number of God's word that you have in you when you are facing trials. Some people will go through their trials and say, hey, they are head. What happened to their head? Some will say, oh, there's nothing, nobody can help that their life has finished. When somebody is confessing that it's, our life has finished, what more is left in that life? Is that is the word of your testimony my life has finished or there is hope in my future? Which one is your testimony? Job 14 verse 7 says there is hope for a tree that when it is cut down, even though the root dry up, he said at the scent of water it shall sprout up again and it shall broaden up with its leaf. So there is hope in your future. Where you are is not your terminal point. God is taking you to a point of greatness. Because there is hope in your future. Continue, please. They did not love their life so much. They did not love their life so much, meaning that whatever you are going through in life must not make you bow for Satan. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not love their life so much that they said, King, listen and listen very good. Even the God we serve, if he will not deliver us from the power of the burning furnace, we will not bow for the image that you are placed before us. That is in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 15 to 25. Whatever you are going through must not make you bow for the storm, must make you silence the storm. Jesus said to the storm, he said, be still and it was still. Are you speaking to the oppositions in your life or are you succumbing to them? You quote the word of God against them. Exodus 15 26 says, I am the Lord that healed thee. When you are sick, do you quote it to that sickness that God is your healer? When you are feeling headache, do you tell that headache that is a stranger? Psalm 18 verse 45 says, The stranger shall fade away from their dwelling places. Yeah, continue, please. As to shrink from death. Yeah. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice. Say, Therefore rejoice. You ever. You ever. And you will dwell in them. And you will dwell in them. But woe to the earth. He said, But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And the sea. And the sea. Because the devil has gone down to you. Because the devil has come down to head and to the sea. Thank you. The reason why you need the heavenly weapon, the weapon that was successful in heaven will be successful on earth. The angels of God fought. As a matter of fact, one third of the angel of God has been has, has converted to Satan before the war. So when one third was converted to Satan, so the three quarter were left with God. One third has gone with Satan. So that one third is the number of angels that fought with Satan. And those are the fallen angels. Mind you, if the word of God says that the angel in heaven, the three quarter, they fought to the extent that their life was almost leaving them. Talk less of we human beings. And the Bible says the weapon they used was number one, the blood of Jesus. If they see the need to use that blood and they know without it they can't survive the battle. And the word of God says they also used the word of God. And the word of God also says and they love not their life even unto death that they fought and fought and says we are not going to bow for you. Although you have converted one third of us, but with the rest we will serve our God. Even if we die in this battle, we serve God. The technique that has worked in the heavenly realm is the only technique that can be used to overcome the battles of life. And it is part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 22. 
The fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, perseverance, gentleness, humility. Christians of nowadays do not have ability to persevere when they are going through trials. They easily give up. You don't give up, but you are the one to stand up and say to the problem that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. You need to tell whatever you are going through that Jesus has the final say over your life. Lazarus thought it was over. In fact, I mean, the sister of Lazarus, Mary, Mary was telling Jesus, he said, I didn't think you had come when you told me Lazarus, your friend was sick. He wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, even now, Lazarus will rise again. She was still thinking, maybe at the resurrection day, John chapter 11 is what I'm speaking from. John 11, from verse 35 downward. And when Jesus got, he said, remove the stone. The stone means your unbelief, your doubts. And all he said is, I thank you God because you always hear my prayer. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. Every good thing in your life that are dead, by the power of the anointing, I command that they shall be activated to life in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray. In some way, you've known how you can use the blood of Jesus. When you are sick, you can bring a cup of water and say, I cover this with the blood of Jesus. I turn it to the blood of Jesus. With your faith, when you drink the water, then you are healed. I know someone that had fibroid. And all I asked her to do was, she was in America, I was in London. So just get a cup of water. Do you have faith that the blood of Jesus can heal your fibroid? She said, just the blood. I said, yes, just that the blood. Said in that water, I begin to say, I plead the blood of Jesus on this water. 21 times. And after we drink it, and I'm very sure that your body system will request that you need to go to the loo. At the aftermath of that, whatever happened, let me hear. Few weeks after, she called me and told me that she's been healed of fibroid. See, the blood of Jesus is the answer.